Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and you may remember recently we did a video on this and we got some comments on it. Some of them are good, some of them maybe not so good. So today we're going to be addressing some of them comments. Let's do this. So before I start with anything, you're probably going to notice, and I don't even know if the mic's going to pick this up, but it is running quite loud at the moment. That's because we haven't actually turned the pump down. When we build systems like this as a kind of showcase for a video, anything like that, well, the build doesn't actually stay built for very long. Nine times out of ten, it gets dismantled. It then gets put up on these shelves. So the motherboard will go up on the shelf. The graphics card will go up on the shelf with all the other graphics cards that I have. That's the reason you don't have them. Clearly, we all know this by now, right? YouTubers, tech tubers, we have all the graphics cards, so let's get that clear. Um, but basically, I saw some of the comments on there, and some of them were really nice, you know, amazing looking build, this, that, and the other. And I'm not one to kind of get butt hurt by stuff, but I feel like some of the comments need addressing. Some of them, as I mentioned, are good. Some of them, not so much. And it, it's just a little bit of a pet peeve of mine that it seems like anyone on the internet now can't make a, a build or do anything based on their style, what they want to do with it, their way of showcasing it without people kind of crapping on it. And I know some people get kind of really frustrated by that. Like I say, I don't really care. You've actually given me a reason to make a video, so thank you for that. So I want to go through some of them comments. And the first one is going to be... So I got this comment. No matter what you do with that, it will be a pain to disassemble or mount. I actually want to say this is completely different to a kind of any case out there really and if anything it's probably going to be even easier to disassemble so with it if we wanted to we could go with quick connect so we could put quick connects on the gpu and the cpu if we wanted to be able to kind of change things easily and just kind of quick disconnect you know the tubing here we could have a fit in there or a fit in there or a fit in there or one there that's going to make things a lot lot easier for us being soft tubing as well, I can actually remove this block. It just means kind of removing some of the, the back of the case. And I could take this whole block off. If it was just a normal CPU block, again, we could just take that off. With all the coolant, everything water-cooled wise, it would still remain intact. We could change the CPU over, stick it back in, and kind of away we go. Nice and easy. So if anything, by going with soft tubing and the way that we've done this, it's just made our lives a lot, lot easier. So the next comment is painful to my eyes. I mean, you might want to go and see a, an optometrist about that and, you know, get your eyes checked. Soft tubes don't have a place in a premium case like that. I mean, could you argue that this is inside a case? Technically, it's open. It's an open bench table or whatever you want to call it. And the whole point of using soft tubing, again, is it's a test bench. This can actually convert and go onto its side which makes things a lot, lot easier when we are doing test bench stuff and, and things like that. So if anything, this is kind of the perfect thing you would do with a custom loop. You would use soft tubing for that very kind of point. And I honestly think that if you do soft tubing and you do it right, it can look really, really good. I mean, at the moment, this is a little bit slacking, but this is the beauty of soft tubing. You can see how much slack this has got at the moment. Well, these doors are actually hinged, so I can go like that, a little bit more, and look, the slack is almost gone. It's tightened itself up. Could you imagine if this was in test bench mode, which means laying it on its side, these hinge doors are of, they've got some weight on it. They've got the rad, they've got the fans, and they've got kind of, you know, everything pulling away from it. Imagine if them hinges just slowly started going like that and you were running on hard line. What's gonna happen? That tubing is just gonna pop off. This is actually giving you, again, more flexibility by using soft tubing. So, sorry, but your comment doesn't really make any sense. So, on to the next one. So the next one is, what's with the air bubble in the CPU block? Now, <laughs> this thing weighs an absolute ton. So trying to get air bubbles out of it, I mean, that's just kind of asking for trouble to start with. It actually takes two of us to kind of lift it and try and get all the air bubbles out. Now, when we do film our videos, we do try and obviously make them as perfect as possible. When we actually first turned this on, there was no air bubble up here at all. We've just taken the air out of it. We've kind of shook it about, maneuvered it about and got the air out. And just since the beginning of filming this video, an air pocket has sort of arisen again. And the reason behind this is because of gravity. So this is basically one of the highest point, points of the loop. The other high points are obviously the two rads on either side, but other than them, this is the highest point of the loop. So air will naturally try and get up there. Over time, this will subside. You can see our built-in flow meter on the monoblock, so it's not actually causing any problems whatsoever. So yeah, things get missed in videos and, and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's still functional and it still works absolutely fine. Over time, it will sort itself out, especially when you start getting some heat into the loop. 
So the next one is beautiful PC case and hardware. Pity about the horrible tube work. Sorry, I have to be honest here. It just looks rushed. Why didn't you go for hardline tubing? It would make a much, much, it would make it look much, much better. And I, I mean, we didn't rush this at all. We had a few little snags along the way and it took us, you know, a couple of days to do. But again, we didn't go hardline because we want to be able to use this as a test bench. We want to be able to take that off and change the CPU. It's really that simple. I don't know whether people are kind of overlooking this point, but that is kind of the main reason behind it all. So the next one is it would look sick if you wall mounted it. Um, yeah, I'm okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this thing weighs a ton in its own right. Even if I try and lift it now. Yeah. It's not exactly light. I don't really want to put this onto a plasterboard wall, a drywall, anything like that. It just, I wouldn't feel too confident doing it. And you have got this big back bracket on there as well, which may cause some slight issues as well. So the next one is, uh, yeah, all that kit and it looks like the tubes are just slapdash together. I mean, they weren't. Uh, we actually had a completely different idea for, for this from the start. We was actually gonna go from this rad over to this, but it would kind of have this long bit there. It did look kind of cool, but I kind of thought, God, everyone's gonna comment on that. So I didn't do it and then everyone commented on it. So the next one kind of gone over this, but this really could have done with some hard tubing. I think I've kind of gone over that many times now that hopefully you guys can kind of see the idea and why we went with soft tubing instead. And we went with quite thick tubing because it does look, you know, I mean, this one here actually kind of looks like a slight bend and it, it, you could pass that as kind of hard tubing from a distance. So this next one made me laugh. Why, why Intel? Um, I mean, why not? So we use the 11900K in here. In our own tests, and I invite you to go and actually watch that video, the 11900K versus the 5900X, which are comparative, comparable CPUs, there's $10 difference between them. You are talking the Intel 11900K beat the AMD in 24 out of the 48 tests. So by my maths calculations, that means it is as equal as the AMD, depending on what you're doing. Obviously gaming, rendering, workload, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes the Intel favored better, sometimes the AMD favored better. So why wouldn't you go for it? And obviously you could probably buy this chip right now, whereas the 5900X, as we know, are still in very, very short demand. So next one, why the soft tubing? It makes it look amateur on a showcase. This case is awesome, but it needs hard tubing. Test bench. That's all I'm gonna say now. Uh, sides of this case are hinged too. I wouldn't want hard tubing to the rads anyway. So this was actually a reply to a comment from one of our kind of, you know, subscribers. And I basically said, you know, I had a chat with that person and I sort of said, yeah, could you imagine the weight of this hinged door pulling down over time if it was in test bench mode? This is basically showcase mode. If you had it so the wings are actually up like this and the whole thing's on the desk, it would be in test bench mode. And that's where things would start having issues, I guess, with hardline tubing. And lastly, someone put no custom sleeve cable, no hard tubing and them ugly EK coolers. Could have made it so much better, but the case is awesome. So, I mean, when did flat cables not be, when were they not accepted anymore? I honestly think these flat cables look pretty damn decent. Yes, we could have used custom cables from To The Wire Mods or someone else out there, but I actually think, yeah, these look pretty decent. They tie in with the system. Again, it's a test bench. That was kind of the whole point behind it. Um, the other part, I mean, the EK, what did he say? The EK, ugly EK coolers. Where, I mean, this looks nice, this looks nice, this looks nice. I, I'm really failing to sort of see, you know, anything there. I mean, if I wanted to get petty, I could, you know, comment on the person's English in the, in the reply and everything in the comments, but I'm not that petty. All right, sometimes I'm that petty. But other than that, I mean, I'll quite happily invite people to do a build like this and I'd love to see your work so I can kind of critique it myself. And maybe we'll do, you know, I keep seeing this on YouTube, people sort of doing, critiques of uh, rigs and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, that's where I need to go with, uh, with videos moving forward and kind of sh on other people's builds. Like I say, it doesn't bother me. I know this video might sound like, oh, Andy, you're so butthurt. Oh my God, you're like feeding the trolls, this, that, and the other. As I mentioned, it's given me an excuse to make a video, so I'm quite happy to do this. And I just wanted to go through maybe some misconceptions about this build and why we chose the things that we chose and why we did it the way that we did it and, and so forth. And, in all honesty, I don't even think videos do this build justice. I honestly think it looks better in kind of person in real life. So, um, so there's that. Either way, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Signing out, one butthurt Andy.